Alright, you better listen up. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a state management library, and I'm German, I know how to pronounce this correctly, it's called... Anyways, with that out of the way, uh, we're gonna... No, I'm just kidding, it's pronounced Zustand, okay? It's Zustand, not Zustand, or... I've seen a lot of pronunciations, it's Zustand, and we're gonna take a look at it. It's pretty cool, it even has some benefits over Redux, in my opinion, uh, for example, the setup or some other things that I'm gonna get into in this video. So, I propose we dive right in, take a look at this uh, state management library called Zustand. Okay, here we are in a brand new, well, uh, not completely brand new because I've already done a Tailwind integration, uh, but in an almost completely new React app, and because I really can't be bothered with CSS. And I think um, understanding Zustand makes sense in first taking a look at how traditional Redux works, because that's probably the library that you're most familiar with. And so let's take a look at how Redux works. Essentially, the first step, we have the UI. So that's what you see on the client side. Um, essentially the, the front end. And um, whenever you change something like a, a counter, you click uh, increase counter or whatever, that's gonna get passed to the action creators, which then pass it over to the store. Now we're not gonna worry about middleware in this instance. The data is gonna arrive at the store and then the reducers are gonna decide what happens with the data um, and change the state accordingly in this step. And then the change is getting propagated back to the UI. So as you can see, the, the data flow only happens from the store to the view, uh, in this case, the UI, and not from the UI to the store. So that never happens in this. Now, if we take a look at how Zustand works, we also have the UI. And whenever a change happens in the UI, that information is getting passed to the store. The store then decides what's going to happen with that information and pass those changes back to the uh, user interface, so whatever you see in the browser. And now this is obviously a simplification, but it does look way easier on paper. And now that we saw what this looks like on paper, I think it makes sense to actually get a bit more technical and take a first look at how Zustand works in an actual React project. So let's say we want to have just a counter, and um, that's gonna be, be a P, and then we're gonna have uh, something like counter, and let's just hard code a one for now. And we also want to have a button to increase or, yeah, let's just um, have a button to increase that counter. Um, so increase counter, that's what it's gonna do. Save that and then the server is already started. Um, so we can go to localhost 3000 and here we have our counter and the increase counter button that obviously do nothing, but that's what we are here to do now. So in the first step we want to install uh, Zustand, and that's gonna be yarn at Zustand uh, because I'm using yarn. But if you're using npm and it really doesn't matter what you're using, um, then you're gonna run npm i or install Zustand. It's gonna do the exact same thing just for npm. And whenever it's done doing that, then we can actually take a look at the um, syntax and how to set up the store because that would be uh, the first step in working with Zustand. So it's done installing. We can uh, start the server back up and now let's create our store, right? Because we have the UI, um, which is this page right here. So what we see in the browser. And now we need to worry about how do we set up the store that uh, the data gets passed to. How do we do that? So um, it makes sense to, well, you can name this whatever you want, pretty much. I'm just gonna call it a store. And then inside the store, you want to have uh, your store hooks. In our case, that's gonna be um, use counter. Now you could have one central store, but I think uh, splitting your logic up into different files makes a lot of sense, especially when you consider that um, the use case of state management libraries is in big projects where you can't just use uh, the use state from React. Now inside of this use counter, I'm gonna have a couple of notes um, here on my left because the syntax is actually, I think a bit more, well, not more complicated, but it is a bit more cumbersome than in Redux, I think, because Redux is what I'm used to. So from this use counter, we're gonna export a constant of, uh, you can again, call this whatever you want. I think use counter makes sense in this instance. And then it gets a bit more complicated. So we're gonna import the create from the library we just installed via npm. And uh, that create is coming as a default import from Zustand. And then we're gonna create and 
call that. Now that's not going to do much. And because we are working in TypeScript, we would also want to explicitly define what this state will um, contain. So in our case, that will be a count. That's going to be a number. And we also want an increase count. And I'm going to type that as any for now, but we are going to probably change that later. Okay, and now with the create, we can pass the counter as whatever we are creating. And now, um, after invoking that create function, we are going to pass a callback as um, right here. And then the first thing we're going to receive in that callback is the setter function that we get from uh, Zustand. And that is not just going to be a function, but it's going to be an implicit object return. So we add the extra parentheses here. And that's why I said the syntax gets a bit, you know, not nasty, but a bit more unintuitive, I'd say. And then here we can declare whatever we had um, defined up here. So in our case, that's going to be the count and then increase count. And that is going to be a function that has a parameter. So we want to increase the count by something. And that is going to be of a type number because, you know, that's what the count is. And then we're going to return void from that function. And so nothing specific has been returned. So in here, we are receiving the by as the first argument. Then that's going to be an arrow function. And now we are going to make use of the set that we got up here from the first uh, argument. We're going to set. And that set is going to receive something as the first parameter. That's going to be the state, so the current state. And now we decide uh, how we're going to change the state. So in Redux, that happened through the reducers in this step right here. And wow, well, this really looks horrible. But in Redux, what we're doing right now uh, would be the equivalent of the reducers because we are deciding on how we want to handle the data. So the state, we're going to receive that. And what we're going to do is we're going to return an object and that counter, um, no, that count that we had up there is going to be. So we're saying this count up here, what should it be now? We could just say five, for example, and that should work when we add a comma. So we could hard code something in here that doesn't really make sense, but let's keep it for now. Um, and so whenever we call this function from the uh, UI from uh, from right here, then we're going to send some data to the store. The store is going to increase the count by five and then send it back to the UI to show that ideally if this works. So um, how do we call this function from the front end though? Now Zustand makes that um, compared to Redux really simple. So that is one thing I like about Zustand. You don't need to wrap your entire app in a provider or something. Um, there's not a lot of setup involved. So you can literally just say cons and then we will destructure later is equal to use counter. And that's pretty much it. And now we can press control spacebar. And because we're working in TypeScript and have explicitly declared uh, what types we're working with, we can press control spacebar here and then see count and increase count and just destructure them here. Now, in larger projects, when you have a lot of variables, this syntax would not be best practice, I think, because when changing something in here, everything else gets re-rendered. So an alternative you could do, which would probably make more sense um, if you're working with a larger stores, then you probably want const count is, is equal to use counter. And in here you get the state and then you return the state dot count. Now that would work in bigger projects for this small example. I think we are completely fine with this. And now we could display the count here. And whenever we click the button, then we could call on click and then increase count. And that takes a number in our example, but it doesn't really because we hard coded um, the counts right here. So let's remove that just for a second. We're going to add it back uh, later. But whenever we click the counter, um, nothing happens. And why is nothing happening? Um, let's see. Okay, uh, apparently we just needed to reload the um, app. 
there wasn't really a mistake in the code. I just refreshed the page and now it's working. Uh, so we have the counter and then whenever we click the button, it will increase the counter by five, but only once. So if we click again, it will still update the state, but the counter is the same. So how do we um, increase the count by an actual number and not just a hard coded value? Well, as you see, we are receiving the state as the first argument. And then we can say state dot count, whatever is now, plus um, the value we want to we the value we want to increase it by, which is right here, the by, it's a number, and then we can just add it to whatever the uh, current count is that we receive as the state dot count. And now, as you can see, we are expecting a number as the first uh, argument or parameter of this function. So this will say expected one arguments, but got zero because it is expecting a number. If we save that, the error should be gone. And now every time you click the counter, then um, the counter will be increased by five because that's what we uh, specified right here in the increase count. And that's pretty cool. Like that's a alternative to Redux, I think a worthy alternative with way less setup. Now I'm not really sure how it will perform in like larger scale applications because I've only ever used Redux for those. But as a first look, I am actually quite impressed with uh, Zustand. There's way less boilerplate involved. The syntax is um, a bit more confusing in TypeScript, especially considering this part right here. Um, but you could just create a shortcut for that to skip the syntax altogether. Um, or you can just copy paste from previous projects if you've ever used uh, Zustand before. So I think in reality, that wouldn't be like an insane issue. And one, or actually two things I really like about Zustand that are, I think, better than in Redux is they make persisting uh, data very easy. And also you can use the Redux, um, like the original Redux dev tools. So you can import two things from, I think it's called Sushdan slash middleware, and we can import persist and we can import dev tools. And let's take a look at how to apply them. So I think we wrap the, uh, I think we wrap this function right here, persist, and then wrap that. Yeah, I think that's correct. And the persist also takes a name. So we can pass in, no, that, that's not what we want to do. So where exactly does this, oh, okay. So it should be here. So the persist ends here. So it also takes a name and let's call it counter. And you'll see in a second what the name is used for. So let's save that, increase the counter bunch. And now if we reload the page, watch what happens. The counter is still the same. So it actually persists the state across um, page reloads, even though it's not storing it in a database. So that means it must be storing it on the client side. And that is exactly the case. So when we go to local storage, we can see that counter, the name we've defined right here, actually contains a value in the um, local storage. And that is uh, an object that has state count 35 and then a version, but the count is what matters. And if you take a look at what happens when we click the increase counter, um, you can see the um, value also go up, I think, right? Yeah, you can see the value go up right here. Um, so 80, 85, 90, and that's pretty much how we persist the data. And then Redux, we would have to use a separate tool for that called Redux Persist, which is not the most uh, intuitive. So I think that's uh, one big advantage that Zustand has over Redux. Uh, if you wanna persist data, and we can also wrap this in another set of parentheses and call dev tools on that. And that will just uh, pretty much make us able to also use the dev tools. Um, so for that, I'm going to use Chrome for a second. And uh, we can see the counter. And then if we go to the Redux dev tools, we can see that every time we're clicking the button, um, that we're using the actual Redux dev tools. And I think that is pretty cool. So that was pretty much it for using uh, Zustand, the first look. My first impression is that it's pretty cool. As I said, I don't know how it will hold up in actual large scale applications, but for now I'm pretty impressed and uh, I'm happy to share that uh, impression with you in this video. Thank you for watching. That was it. See you in the next video and bye bye.